أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه هدى للعالمين أرسله أرسله الله بدين الحق ليذهل عدين كله ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأزواجه وضرية وصحابه وتابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله أذكركم إياي بتق الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم حيث يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا تق الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وذكركم إياي بحفظ القرآن الكريم وسنة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity of life. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that opportunity to gather here today for no other reasoning of bringing us here together except for to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu has said in a hadith, that imanu ma waqara fil qalb wa sadaquhu al-amal. That Iman, faith, is that which settles in the heart and the limbs testify to it, i.e. there is action after it. The fact that we are sitting here right now is a testimony to the faith that is inside of our hearts, realized and activated through our limbs. And we should give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immense gratitude for that. Coming here... To this khutbah today, my mind is all over the place in terms of what I should speak about. I received the first phone call last night from a student who was concerned about what they should speak about in their khutbah and asked me for some advice. I advised them, but now I'm going to go against the advice that I gave them, asking myself if that makes sense. As I woke up this morning, my phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing. Or first was a message that I received on social media from an Orthodox rabbi that I used to work with back on the East Coast, sending me his condolences and well wishes for our community in a hope that we are safe in light of everything that has happened. And I thought to myself, that message to me is meaningful in that the world perhaps wants us to think that an orthodox rabbi and an imam of a Muslim community should not be friends, should not care about the well-being of one another, should not care about the fact that if a bomb goes off, in Tel Aviv or some other place that I can't have concern for that person's well-being for their family and children as well. Or should I mention the phone call that I received from a high school teacher who was a friend of mine called me weeping. I don't won't know what to make of this world anymore. Have we just gone mad? Is this the world that we live in? or the shop owner who said that all day yesterday people were talking about it after it happened inside of my shop and assuredly today they're going to ask me some questions what do I tell them? or the other people that I've encountered from this morning at Fudger until right now what do I tell them? I tell you right now with all honesty standing in front of you as a servant of Allah Taala, I don't know what to say I don't know what to say. 
Because there is no right answer for us to say in this moment, and every single one of us are going to deal with this in a manner that is a reality of the context that we face in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To me, that's the reality. There is no cookie cutter for this. There is no get well pill that we can give for this. But there are realities that exist inside of our tradition that can help us and aid us through moments such as this. The first thing that came to mind, the first thing that I sat with for a while after this, is that what are the opportunities that exist in my life because Allah has given me life today that I can change? A good friend of mine, as I sat in his khutbah one day, he said something in the khutbah where he said that the Prophet ﷺ has advised us to reflect upon death. That thing which destroys the ladhat of this world, if you will. That thing which brings an end to it. And I sat with that for a while. Because what he said to me made the most sense and I've carried it for years. And I try, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to live by that. He said that by remembering death, it is not to put us in this morbid place of separation from the ones that we love. But rather it's the, it's the exact opposite, which is to enhance the relationships that we have right now because there is a reality that I may go to Juma on this day like those people in Christchurch and I will not come home to my family. That's the reality of the world that we live in right now. And so it made me think for a moment, back to the phone call that I had with my mother this week, when she asked me to call my aunt because she has just undergone surgery, her older sister, and that she's concerned for her health and well-being. But to this day, I stand in front of you, I haven't made that call 72 hours later, because why? I have time. That's the trick of this world. It'll put all the important things in front of our lives that really at the end of the day, if I understand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are absolutely meaningless. But then something like this comes into our reality. And as I said, I don't know what to tell you. Everyone is on their own path. And they have to figure out what that path means to them. They have to figure out why Allah put this in their life at this moment right now for where we sit as individuals. Yes, collectively, there are many things that are happening. They are very good and positive. And I have no doubt that they will happen because I believe in the well, the, 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 the well uh, uh, state, if you will. I believe in the goodness, the inherent goodness that exists inside of mankind. The people that will come to support, the people that have already come to support, some of the imagery that you are seeing, some of the calls that are coming out. Can I aid you? Do Muslims need anything? How can I be there? This is the world that I want to see for my children. Be you Muslim or anything else underneath that. That's the world that I want to see that we can live in. And that's what this moment has given me pause for. To put into perspective things that are important in my life, and to absolutely push aside those things that are not, because those things can wait, and to not have them conflated, and not have them confused, nor to be confused by them. So in sitting here today, these are some of the things that I wanted to share. Because everyone's looking for answers, but perhaps the answers already exist inside of our lives. We just have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the courage to act upon those answers. And the answer to me that keeps coming up every single time that I reflect this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, what is this world to me except that I am a traveler? I take rest underneath a tree for a short period of time and then I carry on. Where is that reality in my life? Are there relationships 
that perhaps need mending with my parents, with my spouse, with my children, with that business partner that I ripped off a few years ago knowingly. Have I made amends with that? Am I ready to die and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that in my account? And if not, then I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do. All of those things, with 2019 coming in, I took a reflection of this year. What is going to happen in 2019? I said nothing's going to happen in 2019 except for the things that I said I was going to do in 2018. Calling myself to account. Again, sobering moments. Calling myself to account. Calling myself to account. Over and over and over again. Calling myself to account. Because there's going to be all kinds of responses. There's going to be all kinds of what ifs, political analysis, and all of these types of things. But we have to ask ourselves. Let's do a heart check right now. When we heard the news of this, what did we do immediately after? Look for the most comprehensive coverage. Maybe it was Anderson Cooper. Maybe it was the BBC. Maybe it was someone else. But if I want to sit here and claim Quran and Sunnah in my life and in my home, then I have to look at what the Prophet Sallallahu How did he respond when some type of affliction visited him? It tajaha ila salat. This is how he was known from his companions. That when some sort of affliction, when some sort of tribulation met the Prophet ﷺ, he turned to prayer. That's the heart check for me right now. I failed. I stand in front of you right now. I failed. But it's a moment for gathering. It's a moment to remind ourselves. It's a moment not to get caught up in this fervor, not to get caught up in the constant victimization. This is a reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed 50,000 years before these people were brought into existence. That is our aqidah. All of us are meeting the reality. And for us, it is to ensure within ourselves and also within our children that we understand and don't just allow the, these words to roll off of our tongue when we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. What does that mean? What does the first part of that mean? Inna lillahi. I am from Allah. So that means that I will submit to all of the realities that are there. That first being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed how I will leave this world and in what manner. And I'm reminded by this of a scholar who received threats from people who said, we're going to come kill you. He said, perhaps Allah has written for you to be the means in which I will leave this world, but I have firm conviction that that decree comes from my Lord and no one else. Inna lillahi. I'm from Allah. He is my creator. He has destined all of this. He has determined all of this. That's what all of this is about. That's why we are sending our kids to Sunday school, is it not? So that they will walk with that conviction and not with fear. Not with fear that every person is out there to harm them. That is not who we are. But if we listen to the media over and over again, and that would be my second advice to you, get rid of these televisions, man. Get rid of these news cycles that are poisoning the mind over and over and over and over again with an endless cycle. Causing fear inside of the children. And we are not there to reassure them. Are we pulling them aside and talking to them and talking through what this has happened from our tradition, from how we understand it as Ibadullah, as servants of Almighty God? I can tell you right now that most people that I'm conversating with, they are not. So what are our children left with? Inheriting our fears? Our anxieties, because we didn't take the time to establish that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a moment for reflection. It's a moment for deep, deep reflection. If we think about this as inna lillahi, that I am from Allah, then all of the wisdom that He is Al Hakim, 
All of the knowledge, he is Al-Ameen. All of the information, he is Al-Khabir. Or I'm sorry, all of the information, he is Al-Aleem. All of the plotting, all of these things. Don't get caught up in this conversation of how could a good and merciful Lord allow this to happen. That's not from the place of Iman. The place from Iman is to say that I can't answer that question. But there will be a time in my creation when I leave this world or perhaps Allah will open up a meeting before that. That we will have answers to it. And if I believe that my Lord is Al-Adl, the just, then I submit to that. أقول قولي حاضر صفر لكم مساء المؤمنين يكون مسافر الله إنه هو غفور رحيم. إن الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله عباد الله أذكركم بتق الله سبحانه وتعالى وذكركم بقوله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول في الحديث بتق الله حيث ما كنت وذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد كما بركت على سيد إبراهيم وعلى آله سيد إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد brothers and sisters in closing here I just want to say that May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and the courage and the forbearance to live with conviction as His decrees unfold. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never allow our faith to waver in moments of tests and tribulations. And may we not be surprised because our tradition tells us over and over and over again that this is a reality of this world. If we're looking for utopia, we got off on the wrong stop. It's the next one. If we're looking for perfection, it's the next stop. This is Dar al This is a place of tribulation. And we should never allow ourselves to be deluded to thinking that it is something that it is not. It can provide for us, yes, incredible opportunities of happiness and joy, no doubt. But also, let's not be shocked when there are realities that unfold that we've been told about. Allahumma arham al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat, al-muslimina wal-muslimat, al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat, يا رحم الراحمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملل على إلى يوم الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم أرحم أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم خفف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ألطف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أرحم أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم نصر من عندك يا رب العالمين O oh Allah, we ask you in this blessed time, in this blessed place, with these blessed people to pour out your mercy into our hearts, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for all of those who have lost their lives in this senseless killing, Ya Allah, to give them uh, to give them the highest levels in Firdaus al-Ala, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow their families to have strength in this difficult time, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for guidance, Ya Allah. We ask you for understanding, Ya Allah. We ask you for protection, Ya Allah. We ask you for divine protection, Ya Allah. We ask you for physical protection. 
protection, Ya Allah. We ask you for protection, Ya Allah, of our health, of our wealth, Ya Allah, of our intellects and of our souls, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our children in this time of tribulation, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our communities, Ya Allah. We call upon your beautiful name, Ya Hafil, Ya Hafil, Ya Hafil. O oh, protector, we call for your divine protection to rain down, Ya Allah. And we call on you, Ya Allah, for your guidance, Ya Allah, to guide our hearts back to you to have absolute strength, Ya Allah, and to keep us on the sirat, Ya Allah. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Wa akhiyat da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqeem al-salat. Yarhamani. Yarhamakumullah.